Hello everyone and welcome. Today we are talking about the bottomless portafilter. Many of you might have seen these things in action, they're very pretty to film and take photos of, but what do they actually do? And how do they differ from regular spouted portafilters? I'm going to answer all of these questions, but please, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button right below this video. It helps me immensely, and you don't want to miss out on some future videos that I've got planned. But back to portafilters, both of them start the same way. What you are seeing with the bottomless is also happening with the spouts, it's just that the process is covered up. You can see that our espresso is finding its way through the tiny basket holes, and as it all comes out and starts to cling together, it starts to form distinct streams. If the espresso is coming out evenly, as is the goal, you'll see the streams quickly become one. So beyond just being able to see the streams come out, there are a few other considerations when using a bottomless portafilter. For one, the espresso will have less contact with the portafilter, and that means less contact with the metal. Some might argue that the metal itself could potentially impart off flavors, although I don't think that this is very likely. What I do think is a realistic argument is that the internal components of a portafilter can get very dirty with coffee oils and sediment over time. And if they aren't being cleaned on a regular basis, every new shot of espresso is being dragged over this old, stale coffee. Kind of gross. So by using the bottomless, you don't have to worry at all about cleaning the inside of your portafilter. And you can quickly turn over the bottomless basket and see when it needs to be rinsed. It's a little bit less cleaning and just a blast of water will do the trick when you're in a busy cafe. And at the same time, you have a little more assurance that your espresso is consistently tasting fresh and new. A second consideration, and probably more important than the first, is that a bottomless portafilter is a great training tool. If you tamp down unevenly, it is very easy to see that you've done something wrong with the bottomless portafilter. If one side starts dripping sooner than another, or if the streams of coffee are very off-centered, it tells you that certain areas of your puck got wet first, saturated quicker, and ultimately extracted differently than other areas of your puck. Even for experienced baristas, this is a great test to see how well you really tamp. But it also helps with other aspects of espresso preparation, most notably how well you're distributing the grounds inside the basket. If you see the espresso starting on the outsides and converging towards the center, it's likely that you have a higher density of coffee grounds in the center of your puck. If you've distributed the grounds evenly into a clean, dry basket, the espresso should come out evenly across the entire basket. The shot we just saw was pretty good better than before, but if we rewind and watch slowly, you can see that the espresso starts just a little bit sooner on the left side of the basket. I think that I naturally tamp slightly off to one side, and with the bottomless portafilter, I was able to identify the problem, and it immediately got me thinking about my tamp every time I went to go make the next shot. One last visual cue to note is that espresso can actually spray out of the filter, and this is an indication of channeling. Channeling is a term we use to describe how water can find its way through cracks and crevices inside your puck. When this happens, usually later in the shot, channeling can over-extract certain areas and under-extract others, usually leading to a weak and watery shot. Here's one example where I actually created a hole on purpose to exaggerate the effect. It wasn't as aggressive as I thought it might be, but you can definitely tell that something went wrong during this shot. All of these visual cues are possible thanks to the open bottom of the bottomless portafilter. So while it's a little bit more to worry about and pay attention to, using one of these helps train yourself or your baristas to use proper preparation techniques and avoid bad habits that lead to bad espresso. A quick note on espresso shot times as well. Just keep in mind that espresso is traveling less distance with a bottomless than it would with a spouted portafilter. If you are planning to switch between the two, just be prepared to adjust mentally for that difference. Your 30 second shot on a spouted portafilter might come out at 27 or 28 seconds with a bottomless. So those are really the important things to consider. Beyond that, 
It just looks really nice. And it's also easier to put cups underneath if you are a barista working on a busy bar. Also, keep in mind that you wouldn't be able to split shots on a bottomless basket, at least not directly, into two cups. Overall, I'm very fond of the bottomless style. If you wanted a recommendation, I would say absolutely, go for it. If you're a cafe, buy a full set. Just make sure that you train your baristas on how to use them, what the differences are, and help them to fix the common problems that they're seeing. That's about it for me. Thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button right below this video. Leave me a like and definitely comment below with your opinion on bottomless portafilters. I can't wait to hear from you and I will see you again next week. Have a great day.